question. Hi, I'm Brian McGrath. I'm an associate professor of urban design at Parsons, the New School for Design, at the New School, of course. Um, this is a, a new position I just started uh, this July, uh, 2007. And, um, and I think I've taken on this new job because of my experience the last two years um, with EC, the India China Institute. Um, I, I began as an advisor, uh, given the theme of urbanization and globalization, because um, I have a background in architecture and urban design, and, um, and had some experience uh, a decade teaching in Thailand and developing new programs in urban design uh, around Asian urbanism there, um, that I informally advised uh, Ashok and, and then applied to be a, a faculty fellow. So I was in the first cohort of faculty fellows as well. Great, thank you. Um, as a new school, this is the tripartite program. Mm. What do you, in, in your experience, what has new school brought to the conversation? Like mm. Indians and Chinese can sit down together and start mm. talking. Why, why would we mm. need to do that in a new school? Well, uh, because I started as a, as a consultant advisor um, and then became a fellow, I think um, I had a, a, a great position and could begin to define how new school faculty could benefit and could contribute to uh, these fellowships. I think initially, um, the fellows were uh, from India and China with the new school being a separate fellowship that um, uh, was not fully participating in, in the, uh, the cohort. And so um, I felt very strongly that uh, I had a lot to learn from interacting uh, with the 10 fellows from India and China. And so I attended every residency, every event, every, every, every panel, every conference, and, and um, really uh, felt there was so much to learn from this extraordinary contact, personal contact, uh, with this small group of people from India and China in the, in the three-way discussions. And so um, just given um, uh, where the world is now, where education is now, where our student body is now, um, I just felt there was no no textbook to learn this. It was only going to come from this experience. And so um, I'm very, very happy now that with the second cohort that um, five new school faculty are, are uh, fully involved and in, in, um, with the cohort from India and China. A lot of Indian and China fellows, especially Indian fellows, um, when they looked at the fellowship and that it was the new school and not any other school, that they felt like this is uh, an asset. Do you, do you think that New School has added it some different mix into Oh, the sure. Fellowship? I mean, I, I, I went to graduate school at Princeton. I taught at Columbia for 15 years. I know what um, uh, a, a, a school like that can provide. And um, maybe it's, you know, longer history or more endowment or something like that, but I, I think um, I think obviously the new school is is more at the cutting edge. It's um, uh, has less established uh, uh, disciplines. Um, the relationship between the new school and Parsons I think is unique. I don't know any other great design school that's part of a school for social research. So I'm there, um, and in part of this and interest in urbanization and globalization, but also in the intersection of design and social science. And, and I don't see that happening anywhere else other than New School. And what about other than the fact that, um, that you felt like there was more faculty involvement and that's a positive thing? What are other kinds of things that you see a positive coming out of the fellowship, having been, you know, been to a lot of the residencies? Um, well, just in terms of of um, access to um, on the ground knowledge, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm interested in concepts and and theory, and uh, but I think the the mix of fellows coming from the most 
academic, intellectual, to the most uh, pragmatic government official, and the, the, the range of experience that everyone brought. So when we went to India and China, it was quite extraordinary, um, the kinds of uh, discussions that we had um, uh, at you know, the highest intellectual level, but then going to um, a migrant school outside of Beijing and, and meeting someone who's, who was you know, an academic education a professor, but who saw the need to start a school for migrant children that didn't exist, and, and how he did that, you know, uh, what it actually was, meeting the kids there and, and seeing the facilities and uh, going to uh, Havari, you know, the, you know, meeting with um, well, uh, uh, NGO people in, in East Delhi who were uh, using the Freedom of Information Act to, uh, to bring uh, uh, food to people who, who uh, were, were, weren't getting access to food. And so, I mean, it's just like, you can read about these or study about them theoretically, but the sort of uh, uh, a chance to really uh, have these encounters. And to see also, I mean, for myself, I mean, as an American going there and understanding all these issue, issues of India and China, but then to go there also and to see how the India fellows were reacting to the experiences of China and, the, and how the China fellows were acting, reacting to the experience, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, can you say a little bit more about seeing, watching the India and China fellow thing? Yes, yeah, so um, I, it was quite extraordinary to see, um, uh, for myself, to see some of these uh, places and, and um, uh, like the migrant school or the uh, uh, NGO in East Delhi, but also to see um, how the fellows from India and China had had these experiences and, and came to um, uh, learn about uh, the other country and the other political systems and, and, and all, all their pre presumptions, presuppositions were sort of dropped. For instance, um, the, uh, all the discussions we had about democracy and, um, and governance and so, um, uh, it was it was quite amazing to see the China fellows sit in the room in, in East, East Delhi with this NGO and learn about the power of the Freedom of Information Act and and the struggles that this group did to sort of uh, not democracy as a concept you know some ideal goal but something that's a practice that um, took quite a, a lot of effort and labor and uh, not just laws, but mechanisms and, and uh, procedures and, and will and you know courage and uh, so um, and uh, and it was you know quite amazing to go to Shanghai and and um, all of a sudden the fellows from India said they wanted to see the slums of Shanghai and we drove around the whole day and couldn't find one so you know all those kinds of experiences I think uh, are. Are part of that tri trilateral experience. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? Looking back in the last two years, uh, probably a lot. Let me think. <coughs> um, uh, I think. Um, I mean, for me, I went to China first time in the eighties, and um, I had never been to India before but um, uh, I've been working in Southeast Asia for, for 10 years. So um, being in China and, and before Tiananmen was uh, an extraordinary experience traveling through the whole country and um, uh, this great moment of opening and curiosity about the world and uh, liberalization and um, before the kind of crackdown. So it was kind of a shock to me to not go to China for, for a number of years, but to um, see how quickly that political struggle was, was dropped and um, with the goal of, of uh, economic prosperity. And, 
so I think um, uh, I, I've visited um, uh, Kunming and Chengdu, southern China, um, several times um, before BC and, and had, was beginning to get a sense of the kind of changes, but then um, to go back to Shanghai and Beijing after 20 years was um, a shock. And, and I think, um, uh, I think uh, um, what came out of uh, that fellowship, that residency in, in Beijing and Shanghai was um, a realization from the fellows from India that the kind of um, slower pace or later development, um, perhaps they could uh, learn from some of the mistakes that uh, it seems like the, the fellows from China were, were telling us that um, uh, the, the way the cities have been designed, there's, uh, there's uh, too much reliance on American models, automobile reliance, um, kind of large scale roads and and the total destruction of the historical city. So I think um, I think um, I'm I'm very interested in in this moment of reconsideration of the fast pace of the development of China and the acknowledgement of the environmental cost and and um, and also India's position to learn from that lesson and do things differently. And so I think this alliance between India and China, this intellectual alliance. Um, um, about urbanization, globalization is really key, and uh, um, and I, I hope there's um, more connection to uh, the countryside and historical uh, cultures of, of both India and China, um, and that's part of my interest is sort of understanding that, recovering that. Okay. Plenty. Great. Okay. I, so. I didn't mumble too much? Or? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, why New School? Why is New School <coughs> important for this trilateral conversation? Uh, New School just has this amazing progressive tradition. I mean, I love the fact that I'm coming here from Colombia, just like um, the protesters of the World War I and had to start the <coughs> university in exile. Um, and so... Uh, I, I really feel it's it's a home for this kind of debate that couldn't happen anywhere else um, to really let the fellows from India and China define what this program is all about and not have to sort of feel they're coming to a, a place that's going to tell them what, what the world is all about. And so I think um, that's what the new school is about, is, is giving a home for uh, ideas that couldn't happen anywhere else and so uh, I think there's been moments in history where that's happened you, you know, the formation of the graduate faculty and um, uh, in around the discussions about World War one the you know the refugees from Europe in World War two and now this moment of globalization urbanization I think uh, it's the right moment for discussions about India and China and the future of the world to happen at the new school. Okay, good. <laughs>